This week has had some pretty darn good news for Star Citizen fans, which frankly we needed. Many fans of the game were expecting a potential delay for the big 3.18 persistence patch. However, on Wednesday, CIG said that we're still on track to get 3.18 to the test servers by the end of the month. However, they do still anticipate two to three months of PTU testing before pushing 3.18 to the live servers in the first half of November. This of course is still a big delay compared to the letter from the chairman timeline, but I do think that everyone is just generally getting excited that it's getting closer and closer to actually being tested and, well, witnessed. Talking about what's possible versus witnessing what's possible are two very, very different things in the Star Citizen universe. Persistent entity streaming and the replication layer tech is a huge step for this game, and if you don't fully understand the gravity of that situation, I recommend checking out this video where I explain just how cool some of Star Citizen's upcoming tech really is. Now, some of the downsides to the news that we got this week were some of the future content delays. The RSI Apollo, which is a dedicated medical rescue ship, and the Tumbrel Ranger, which is basically a planetary exploration motorcycle, were delayed due to shifting priorities, mainly with Squadron 42 things needing more focus. People have been wanting the Apollo for quite some time, but considering that it would require quite a few new systems and even mission trees, it's understandable why why it's not being progressed over other aspects of the game right now. They did, however, add a new ship to the progress tracker, and that is the Aopa Santakiai, which I'm sure I'm pronouncing incorrectly. It is a medium fighter for the Xi'an. I personally really like the car -to wall light fighter from the Xi'an, so I'm excited to see what a medium variant can do. And I like ships that change up the propulsion ideology for the typical spacecraft. Xi'an ships allow you to more or less accelerate in all directions very quickly, making them difficult to predict in combat, and it's also just fun as a pilot to have different capabilities. Alien ships also just make me really happy, so the more that we have in game, the better in my opinion. I also think they just really need some more very alien-like weapons to go with them, maybe some beam stuff or whatever, just something that feels less laser gunny than what we currently have. The work for this ship is scheduled to go throughout June though, and we don't know if that means if it'll actually be completed then. Hopefully they can also give the car to all a gold pass while they're at it, considering that the current ship can't even properly land at the moment. Now this week's episode of Inside Star Citizen was one that players have been waiting on for quite a long time, a detailed look at salvage and hole stripping. This is going to be a new gameplay loop available in 3.8 and only possible in 3.18 due to persistence. When spaceships are destroyed in the upcoming 3.18 patch, it's less likely that they'll just vaporize, but instead they'll crash on a planet or become disabled in space. From there, they could be repaired, but it's more likely that they'll be salvaged for raw materials. Eventually, entire ships could be broken down, but the first tier of salvage will be hole stripping. This can be done by hand with the new 318 hand salvage tool or with the two salvage ships, the Drake Vulture and the Aegis Reclaimer. Both ships can kind of use these beam weapons or tools to kind of suck the raw materials off of the surface of a ship and then produce containers with the raw whole material, which can then be sold or I believe also reused in repair operations. A cool new gameplay loop could be where Bounty hunters can shoot down an enemy ship. They could then see where the enemy ship crashes, land next to that wreck, and then use their own hand tools to hole strip the crash ship to repair their own after the combat. I really like this idea, and it's especially a neat concept for, say, PvP, where winning a fight might not always mean limping back to a space station with a disabled ship that you have to repair for a hefty fee. Your opponent's ship might actually 
actually have the materials needed to fix your own. Now, the massive Reclaimers multi-crew approach to salvage is pretty interesting. Having two massive salvage beams and a massive salvage bay to store materials. The Reclaimer is designed to eventually be able to crunch the structure of a ship as well. So whole stripping would be like the step one for this ship. I don't know how I feel about players having to manually stack the boxes in the cargo bay. It seems like an automated system makes way more sense than that the current design is more a result result of potentially poor early game design not considering what the end game process should be and I'm not sure how many people want to be the box guy in the back of the ship but who knows how much labor it's actually going to be. The fact that the Reclaimer is going to be able to actually do something soon is very exciting for people who have owned this ship for years and years and years and years without really being able to use it for anything. I hope it also gets some good atmospheric flight tuning as well as it's pretty challenging to, well, actually go down to a planet's surface and then exit the atmosphere as the thrusters are, well, not really up to the task in many situations. Now today, Jared Huckabee and several big brain developers hosted a live community chat answering questions about persistent entity streaming and how it's actually going to work well in practice. And this is actually really good that they did this because honestly, it's confusing. Some of the bigger takeaways are how shards will work. Items are going to be shard specific. Shards are basically servers in this case, and you can't control which server or shard that you're going to connect to. So say if you stash something on a planet and then reconnect and land on that planet again to look for the item, well, unless you just happen to reconnect to the same shard, that item items probably not going to be there. Someone else might reconnect to the same shard where you left the object on the planet and find it, but there's a good chance that you won't reconnect to the same one. Now that said, the number of shards will be reduced as server meshing is integrated down the road and even further reduced as dynamic server meshing is integrated. It's possible to get to a point where you can more or less expect to always plan to reconnect to the same shard at some point, but again, the persistent tech is so early that the devs didn't want to commit to anything like that just yet. They are, after all, still just trying to get the very first implementation of it out to the public for testing. As for base building, which is a down the road profession and an end game gameplay loop, bases should persist between shards. But again, this is something that is still being discussed and is probably highly dependent on how the current tech rolls out. Now, one of the bigger concerns with persistent entity streaming is objects being replicated to the point of, well, just crashing servers for everyone. They did talk about having a density manager for persistent entity streaming, and that will be a big part of the PTU experience is just getting that tweaked. That means despite objects remaining in the universe indefinitely, you can't just propagate the universe with like thousands upon thousands of things and just have them stay there forever. The server is going to have item limitations to make sure that people don't crash servers or overload it to the point where players can't run the game because there'll be too many objects and their frame rates will crash. This will be a big part of the PTU experience as that's getting tweaked. If the PTU keeps breaking the universe with tons of object density breaking the experience, then they'll have to tweak the code accordingly. Persistent entity streaming truly is a massive unknown for Star Citizen and just gaming in general. Nobody has made a game of this scale where everything can just remain in existence more or less indefinitely and I have no doubt that the lessons learned here are going to take well kind of years to fully grasp. Now beyond some of those big ticket weekly items the Carrick spaceship kind of a bigger multi-crew ship which is really cool it actually won the community voted ship showdown contest which is neat if you care about that kind of thing. It and three other ships are going to get custom skins eventually in game. So if you own those ships, you will get those skins for free. There is a pirate themed week happening right now with some nine tails in game events kicking off uh, some custom skins that you can buy in accordance to those. And there's also a free fly week happening right now. If you haven't played the game right now, sign up 
for an account and be sure to use my referral code which I will link below for some extra in-game credits. There are some sweet ships that you can try out right now. Uh, I highly recommend doing Free Fly Weeks if you haven't played Star Citizen right now. It's a great way to try out the game for free. Otherwise, it can cost about $45 to try out the game at the base entry fee. Overall, I am really excited to try out the new 318 patch, even if it's not a giant night and day difference from the current version of the game. Sure, salvage will be cool. I'm sure it's not going to upend the game and change everything massively, but uh, just seeing the, the new tech in the game, basically the big part of 318 is that Basically, all the back-end server tech is going to be totally new. All the systems are going to be running on new back-end tech. Tons of stuff is going to be new on the back-end, even if what you're seeing in the game isn't going to feel new or necessarily look new. It's all going to be new under the hood, and it's basically setting the groundwork for pushing the game into server meshing. And so it's, it's kind of an exciting time for the game, and the fact that potentially we could be testing this out this month is uh, massively exciting. It sort of is like the beginning of the final vision of this game, if that makes any sense. It doesn't mean it's like the beginning of the end for Star Citizen. I still know that we have years and years and years for this game to go before it starts seeing a feature complete version of what it's supposed to be, but it's still very exciting. Now, if you haven't watched my video on server meshing tech, I highly recommend it because it's really about what this technology means for gaming in general, not just for Star Citizen uh, and what it could do for your favorite gaming genres. Check it out here. And as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.